my lovelies, welcome to my channel. How are you? I hope you're doing amazing. I hope you're ready for the holidays. Um, so I decided to do this reading for you guys. This is going to be who's coming towards you for this 2021. Uh, this is going to be a time frame from now, December 22nd to January the 31st, 2021. As you guys can see here, we have the pyramid. That's going to be set number one. We have the cookie set number two. And we have the uh, crystal quartz wand set number three. We're going to do this freehand um, as I do want a channel. So what we're going to do is I am going to give you guys enough time to be able to choose uh, set number one, set number two, or set number three. Then we will proceed to doing the reading for you. Okay, my lovelies? I hope uh, this helps you, guides you, gives you better understanding of what's to come. In regards to love, romance, uh, this could be partnerships in regards to business, etc. So let's just see uh, what spirit wants to communicate with you. And let's see who's coming towards you for this 2021. So I'll give you guys a couple of minutes and we'll get right into it. Put set number two and three to the side. We're going to go into it with set number one here, the pyramid. Let's see exactly who's coming towards you. Let's see if this is love, if this is business, spirits. <sighs> who's coming towards set number one? From now, December the 22nd, going into January 31st, 2021. Who's coming towards them? What can they expect from this connection? Okay. All right, let's get right into it. All right, so we have the judgment card. For some of you guys, this could be a person from the past returning. This could be a person that you're no longer dealing with, but at some point you were dealing with. Uh, the judgment card can also represent making a decision. Uh, so there may be a decision that is taken. Six of Pentacles, it could have been a situation or a partnership relationship where it was in balance, meaning either you were giving too much in this connection um, or they were taking too much or it could be vice versa. It is a general reading. But with the Six of Pentacles, there is definitely a lot of taking in this partnership and I have a feeling that it wasn't you who was taking. Uh, it could have been that the other person uh, was taking either a lot of your time, a lot of taking you for granted is what I'm hearing. For some of you guys, it could have been a situation where you kept putting energy and effort towards it. And there could have been a situation where you kind of had to walk away. Yeah, the two of pentacles here with the six of pentacles. This was definitely a connection that was very, it wasn't a give and take type of situation. Um, it could have been that they were, you know, you were too nice. You were giving too much, too much effort. You could have helped them financially as well. But it's almost as if they just kept taking and taking. With the Tower card here, this could definitely be the planet alignments right now that we're currently experiencing. So it's almost like they're starting to experience karma. They're starting to see that not everyone is you. And that not everyone's going to put up with their nonsense. Or that not everyone is going to be willing to to do for them um, because it's almost like I'm feeling a lot of regret right now. So for a lot of you guys that chose set number one, it could have been a partnership, a relationship where you just kept trying and trying with the tower card. This is massive transformative energy, exactly what we just experienced. So it could be that either you walked away from this connection or slowly but surely you guys kind of started drifting apart. And with this conjunction that we just experienced, it could have really shaken you to the core where you had to, you had to like check yourself like, okay, what am I doing? Am I the one that's always going to be chasing? Am I the one that's always going to have to be putting effort? Am I the one that's going to have to be sacrificing? And something in you just clicked. So it could have been that you've completely cut them off, or it could be that you haven't been dealing with them for quite a while. But in this conjunction, you're kind of starting to feel their energy. And it could be because they're getting ready to either reach out or come towards you. Now, we do have here the High Priestess. And this is crowning your energy. So, again, I feel that you're very empowered. I feel that 
there was a lot of like reflection going on, a lot of internalizing, figuring out this is like not working. What is it that I need to do? Do I need to shake things up? Do I need to walk away? Do I need to just cut my losses type of energy with the high priestess? You were listening to your intuition or you were being guided. Uh, for some of you guys, time was a necessity, meaning they had to either you had to pull away or they had to go figure out themselves before they came at you the right way. I hope that makes sense. Now we have the sun card. Yeah, that's the exact energy I was feeling. So it's almost like what they're saying is it could have been a situation where there was connection, there was love even, but this person could have been dealing with like being very selfish or narcissistic or not really taking the time to figure out what it is that you needed in this relationship. It was all about like they were in a headspace of it's all about me, me, me. When you pulled your energy or when you walked away from this connection, it's almost like it shook their world. Like they were not expecting that or they could heavily be missing you right now. And that's the reason why you may be hearing from them. It's like, you know, with Saturn and Jupiter uh, conjunction right now in Aquarius, it's highlighting uh, certain things that we've been suppressing. And for them, I feel that it could have been that they did, in fact, feel this connection or this love, but they were just doing them. They were being selfish in that sense. They, you know, wanted to have you, but they also wanted to do their own thing. Um, and with you pulling away, it's like they came to the understanding like, hey, I, I am actually losing this person and they see you as, you know, the sun. So the sun is all beauty. It's all a warmth embrace, a loving embrace, a giving embrace. Um, so I see them seeking or trying to reach out to you. The advice here is the page of swords. So if you feel that at this point, when this individual reaches out to you, if you feel at some point like this was a toxic situation or that they really tested you and it was almost like, very see because the page of swords could represent um looking at them or that they're looking at you through social media trying to see what's going on in your life but at the same time the page of swords is that of communication and i see you blocking or cutting that communication when it comes through so it could be that at that point in time when they reach out or when they try to come back you may actually feel like at that point you're just ready to cut them out. You're not going to deal with that anymore. Now, for others of you, this could represent trying to play mind games. Uh, it could represent like you feel like now the ball is in your court and you can be a bit spiteful. What they're saying here is with the sun card and the page of swords, if you feel that this connection can no longer move forward, meaning you don't really want nothing from, to come from this, it's best for you to walk away. Uh, keep in mind, again, Saturn is a karma planet. You don't want to, uh, when this person is, regardless of what they put you through, that was perhaps a life lesson that you needed to learn in order to either learn to deal with abandonment issues, learn to deal with self-love, uh, when do you get to the point of saying enough is enough? Do you wait until everything is falling apart? Or do you learn to love yourself enough that the moment you start to see nonsense, you walk away and remove your energy from that? So again, just keep that in mind. Now, again, the star card. Yeah, I feel that they are being illuminated. I feel that they're definitely um, having a different perspective or approach in regards to this connection. And I do see them hoping and wanting the star card is hanging on to that wish or hoping or praying uh, that things can you know be able to fix is what i'm hearing so again it could be them being hopeful about trying to come back around and trying to contact you with the hanged man i feel that again you are going to be feeling very unstable like your emotions could be tested you may get uh, you may even open communication, but at some point you may end up feeling like everything this person puts you through starts to come up to surface. So again, it's having the need 
to remove yourself from that energy if you feel that it is toxic or bringing out the worst in you. Um, the hanged man can also represent, uh, you know, no longer sacrificing yourself to make someone else happy. And again, we go back to that of self-love. You may be dealing with an earth energy, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo. You may be dealing with the Leo. You may be dealing with the Pisces. You may be dealing with an Aquarius. Um, you know, I, I pretty much see all the signs here other than fire energy with the sun, um, Leo energy. But again, what they're saying here is this could be, and you have the queen of pentacles. So yeah, earth energy as well. What they're saying here is, again, be practical in your approach to the situation. Like I said, if you feel that this is no longer something that you're able to fix or you want to fix, like you don't have the energy for, do not deal with this person anymore. Just, you know, walk away from that type of connection. We're going into 2021. It's a new beginning. You want to release anything that has ended to be able to embrace a new beginning so you don't continuously keep being put in situations where you constantly have to keep dealing with the same the same energy uh, because again it could be like a lesson that you needed to learn and you know the more we kind of go back to that uh, the more we it keeps repeating itself so it's like a cycle it could be uh, this is a situation where you've dealt with this with different people it may be different people but it's the same type of energy where you have to ask yourself, when do you get to the point of enough is enough? It's learning to love yourself and treasure and value yourself so much that the moment they are no longer giving and all they're doing is taking, you need to put your foot down and walk away from that. Okay, let's see what Spirit's advice is here. What's the direct message for those that chose set number one, Spirit's? Yeah, we definitely don't want to be carrying, you know, past energies into the new year. Um, I know that, you know, when it comes to relationships, that's difficult to do. Um, but it is important to acknowledge, you know, if this person was a toxic type of energy or just an individual that broke you, uh, individual that made you question your self-worth, uh, an individual that made you be insecure or feel insecure that's not the type of energy you want around you why would you want a partner that way you know the partner that you're with should bring you emotional stability uh if anything it should be the contrary of that make you feel very important make you feel very confident and uh feeling very supported okay all right so the first card here we have the energy is gaining momentum, waxing moon. So yeah, I feel that with this conjunction that we just experienced, there is very high energy. Um, the possibility of materializing uh, anything that has to do with manifestations are very heightened right now. Um, so what they're telling you is, you know, move forward and put energy towards the positive and towards what you're excited that may be coming towards you uh, versus dwelling with energies that you've dealt with and it, it just it just didn't pan out. Uh, the best advice I can give is just let it go. Yeah, <laughs> excuse me. We have another card here, and it is the end of a tough cycle approaches full moon in Capricorn. So again, I feel that in regards to love and romance, there may be a new beginning that's coming towards you. There may be a new individual coming through for you. Uh, for others of you, if you've been wanting or hoping to hear from this person, there's definitely going to be communication in January. And then the third card here is a win-win outcome is forecast. So, like I said, if you if this person wasn't toxic and it had more to do with maturity, like not being uh, mature, I should say immaturity, um, I feel that this person learned their lesson and they're willing to come back and give it their all with the star card. Um, and if that's the case, then what they're telling you here is, again, it is very important to know your worth. The moment they start to take their energy away or the moment they're no longer putting effort in this connection or in this relationship, that's the moment you need to walk away. Don't wait for it to just be completely destructive to walk away from that. You know, don't wait till it gets worse. It's about knowing your worth, sweetheart. All right. Okay, 
Let's go now to set number two. For set number two, what's coming towards them? What can they expect? What is unfolding before them? Who's coming towards them? Who's coming towards them? Who's coming towards them for January? From now, December the 22nd to January the 31st, 2021. Who's coming towards them? Who's coming towards them? Who will be contacting or coming towards them? Who's coming towards them? Who's coming towards them? Who's coming towards them? Spirit guides, who's coming towards them? Who's coming towards them? Okay. All right, my lovelies, here we are doing set number two, the cookie. Quick known um, story behind this. Uh, by the way, if you're watching Lovely, this is the cookie you sent me. I had a lovely client of mine send me, uh, surprise me with some Starbucks and some cookies and just goodies. Um, and I was like, you know what? I want to show her how much I appreciate her. So I will use that as a uh, integrated in my video. So here we go. Set number two. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's see what's coming towards you. All right, for those of you guys that chose set number two, the cookie, seven of pentacles. So we have a situation where you could be in your feelings. You could be reminiscing about the past. You could be looking towards everything that you've gone through in a positive way. I feel that there is hopefulness here. There is a desire. This could be speaking to those that are single um, because the, you know, the shoe that she's holding is red and red is a representation of passion, desire. And if you can see in the back, there is um, swans. So I connect that or cor correlate that with love. So for some of you guys, it could be that you're looking to the past, thinking about when you were in relationships or missing the feeling of connection. And I definitely do see new love coming in for you guys. Now, what's crossing you is the Eight of Wands. So, yeah, I feel that for a lot of you guys, it could be almost like a feeling that your love life just hasn't panned out or it hasn't progressed or it's been stuck for a while. <laughs> but the Eight of Wands as a blockage is only a representation of spirit telling you in due timing. You have to learn to be patient. You cannot force things. You cannot make things progress quicker when it, there is a need for rest or there is a need for repose or there is a need for healing. Now, past and passing energies is the four of pentacles. It could be that you're currently or currently have been working through uh, emotional clinginess. It could be that you have been challenged to rise to the occasion and to work through your shadow side. So it could be shadow work that you're doing or something that you have been highly needing to do. Now, when we speak about shadow energy, this is... A lot of the things that we need to work on that we go from relationship to relationship, not really wanting to put effort in trying to heal ourselves. So it could be a situation where there was possessiveness. It could have been a situation where you felt very restricted or you restricted your partner. Um, for others of you, this could represent or symbolize a relationship where you felt like it was very intense and very passionate in the very beginning. And after that, it kind of, it almost felt like it was slipping from your hands. So the more you start to experience change, the more you kind of start to vibrate from that shadow side, which is possessiveness, jealousy, overprotectiveness, that type of energy. So what they're saying is this is something that you have been tested. And I feel that for a lot of you guys, this... Um, you know, this solar eclipse that we recently experienced could have brought that up. Um, for others of you, it could just be the need to have to understand fully why there are certain attributes or certain things that you have a tendency of doing when in a relationship. So it's almost like the Eight of Wands represents quick movement. It's the arrows of love, and it also represents love, right? But in the negative aspect meaning in on the shadow side of the eight of wands it's very impulsive it's the type of energy where you so the next card here is the five of pentacles the five of pentacles could have been a situation again like i was saying 
I feel that you guys were tested in regards to abandonment issues. The Five of Pentacles is feeling the loss or the longing. Uh, for some of you guys, again, with the Eight of Wands, I feel that there could have been like a, a moment or a period where there was a desire to manifest love and it just wouldn't work out. Uh, the Five of Pentacles is constantly thinking about not being able to attain, not being able to have, not being able to, uh, you know, experience a stable or loving relationship. Now, what's crowning your energy here is the Two of Wands. So again, partnerships is something that's been heavily on your mind. What they're telling you here is with the Page of Swords, you, you have to release these negative thoughts. You have to release this negative belief. Um, and again, work through your shadow side because there are certain, even if you're the type of person that continuously keeps saying, you know, I invite love into my life, I embrace it. If you're not fully connecting with that statement or fully connecting with the knowing that you deserve love, that you deserve to be treated like a queen or like a king, that you are worthy of love. If you don't fully understand this, if you don't fully believe in this wholeheartedly, you may keep repeating this to yourself, but your subconscious is still feeling like there's lack of, like I don't have that relationship I want. Like I'm not able to bring to me a lasting relationship with this eight of wands. It's, om it's almost like either, you know, flings, or relationships that start very hot and heavy and they crash and burn very quickly. And with the Page of Swords, there is a need for you to shake or to cut off that state of mind. If you're wanting to bring long-term committed relationships to your life, you cannot keep entertaining people that you know don't want nothing serious. If they tell you, I'm not looking for anything serious and you've convinced yourself that you can change their way of thinking or that you can change their desires down the road and that's why you stick around. Well, guess what? You need to stop entertaining these type of energies. You cannot continue giving your energy and effort towards people that are openly telling you they're not looking for something serious or that they don't openly tell you but they show you through actions. So there is a need for you to cut that toxic trait or behavior that you have a tendency of doing. You cannot send two different signals to the universe. You cannot say, I want a commitment, I want marriage, I want a loving, lasting relationship. And then the first person that comes along, it's hot and heavy and you're like, you know what, I'm just going to go for it because you never know. Well, you kind of do if you keep doing this, if this is a habit. You kind of do know. So there is a need for you to pull away your energy from that, from those people, from those situations. Now, the advice here is the tower, my love. So with the tower, there is a need to completely transform your way of thinking. That is the only way you're going to be able to turn around the situation and to be able to embrace and experience and have a long-term committed relationship. This is deeply rooted, deeply connected to your subconscious, to your childhood. This is deeply connected to past lives. So again, you have to do the work. With this Four of Pentacles here, the jealousy, the overprotectiveness, the um, mistrust, you know, because the Four of Pentacles, it's, it's a very possessive card. So those possessive traits you know, don't just go away with the next person that comes along because they will put you in a situation, in a circumstance, in a place where these insecurities are tested or are ignited and your shadow side comes out. You start to do very toxic things. For some of you guys, stalking. For others of you, going into this, you know, fighting and very intense type of nasty energy. But... It's, it's thrilling and exciting for some of you, but, and it also makes you like, there is a, what they're, te okay, so what they're telling me is there is a connection between intense, passionate, um, 
very toxic energy that is very luring to you. So it could be that you have, uh, you know, even you may not be aware of it, but you have a tendency of attracting people that are very, uh, very toxic, that are very possessive, very jealous, or that every time you guys have fights or arguments, it gets very like nasty really quick. But at the same time, the making up is so intense as well. And what they're saying is this is not helping you. It's not it's not healthy is what they're saying. So there is a major transformation that's happening and that is necessary for you to go through this healing energy in order to be able to embrace a new beginning. With the nine of wands, the nine of wands is all to do with, you know, being tested, being like you've gone through difficult situations. For some of you guys, you know, feeling or getting to the point of relationships where you're ready to throw in the towel, but for some reason the passion... The nine of wands in this deck, look, fire all around. So it's it's like you are attracted to the intensity of partners or relationships like a moth. And this brings a lot of instability, a lot of turmoil, a lot of not knowing where you stand with these individuals, with these people around you. But it still attracts you like you can't help it because you are a very intense person. And there's nothing wrong with being intense. Let me tell you, nothing wrong with that. But when they start to bring out the worst in you, then we have a problem. And that's something that you have to address. Now, your next card here is the King of Wands, maybe dealing with fire energy. Uh, for some of you guys, it could be a situation where when there has been, for some of you guys, you could have experienced a situation where there was an ending of this toxic type of energy. And you're trying to pull away because you've exhausted yourself or because you're no longer wanting to deal with this because you've put in the work and you're willing or ready to vibrate to a higher frequency and you're wanting to attract or bring to you a new healthy relationship. Now, you may feel like there's lack of love around you or lack of opportunities or suitors or women that you know, you're attracted to. But you do have here the King of Wands. And what this is representing is a new energy coming in. It could be both female or male. King of Wands is fire energy, Sagittarius, Leo, Aries type of energy. Um, and what they're saying here is that this individual, where right now you feel like there's lack of, it is connected to the King of Wands. So for some of you guys, it's a new person coming in in January for you where this person knows exactly what it is that they want and they are emotionally ready. But if you have not worked through this energy, if you have not put in the effort to heal yourself, to heal those wounds, to be able to understand what is it about that intensity that you're so attracted to. This King of Wands that's coming towards you, they have absolutely no problem walking away or closing the door. If you can see in the background, there's a gate. They have no problem walking away or closing the door on people they feel that are not serious about what, like taking them seriously is what I'm hearing. So I feel if you can see here, he's open, right? It could be a female. She's open. She's ready. She knows what she wants. He knows what he wants. But what I'm hearing very highly for you guys is the moment they start to see or experience toxic energy, they have no problem walking away from that. It could be an individual that has gone through the same energy you've gone through and you've been dealing with in the past, and they're no longer wanting that. So again, you don't want to miss out on a genuine connection because the moment you start to feel changes or the moment you start to see changes in a person, in a behavior, um, it's almost like it sets alarms off and then you start acting a bit crazy. Now, this could be the type of person that you have a, a tendency of dealing with as well. Now, the next card is the Eight of Swords. 
So the Eight of Swords is, again, feeling tied, feeling bounded, but it has more to do with a mental state of thinking, a mental state of mind. So what they're telling you here is, for those of you guys that chose set number two, there is a need to acknowledge the toxic traits about your shadow side and to learn to control it or to learn to heal through it so you don't constantly are in the edge of your seat waiting. It's almost like I'm hearing what they're saying is you're at the edge of your seat hoping and waiting that they fuck up just so you can say, ha, huh, I knew they were going to let me down. You need to change this way of thinking. Because I tell you what, this fire energy that's coming towards you is the opposite of lack of. So they're willing to give. But they're also telling me this is a person that has a very strong character. Uh, so it's an individual that does not put up with bullshit. I'll tell you that right now. All right, let's see Spirit's direct messages for set number two. Spirit, what is your direct message for those of my lovelies that chose set number two? Okay. And we have, what do you need to release? Exactly what we just talked about, you guys. And here's the thing. A lot of the times, we always want to blame other people when relationships don't work out. We always want to blame the other person, right? He fucked up. She fucked up. Truth of the matter is, it takes two to tangle. And it's even more difficult to look at yourself in the mirror and take self-responsibility for certain things that you also allow to play out in the relationship. So there is a need for you to release that shadow side of you that is unhealed, that you need to work through, that you need to figure out why you react to certain situations. Do they trigger the past? Do they trigger things that you've experienced in the past? Does this feeling of abandonment or trust issues have anything to do with your childhood? Was a father or mother figure not constant in your life? Or did they not learn to love you correctly? That you grew up thinking you were unlovable or you're a very difficult person to love? Now your next card here is show the world the real you. Full moon in Aquarius, my lovelies. This is Aquarian energy healing. Healing. Going into the next cycle of our, of our lives, being more aware. Being more understanding of our own nature. And finally, your commitment is being tested. This is the commitment to yourself. This is the energy of do you really want a partnership? And if you do, are you willing to commit to it? Are you willing to commit to it to the point that you are no longer going to be dealing with, you know, fuck boy or fuck girl energy? That you're no longer going to allow your energy, your body to be diluted to one night stands? Or to situations or people that, you know, are not consistent in your life. And if the answer is yes, I'm willing to commit, then they're telling you there's commitment coming towards you, but you have to own it. All right, my lovelies. I hope you guys enjoy. Now let's go to set number three. Okay, let's do this. All right, my lovelies, I was shuffling and these cards popped out, so we are going to go with it. So your first card here is the Knight of Swords, okay? You could be dealing with a situation where at this point, there was a need to pull or extract your energy from a situation, from an individual or a person uh, that is no longer serving you. With the Three of Pentacles, it could have been almost like you've put a lot of effort, a lot of energy into this, uh, and it just didn't, you know, stabilize the way you wanted it to. With the Ten of Pentacles here as an obstacle, 
The Ten of Pentacles is stability. So I feel there was lack of stability in this connection or in this partnership or this relationship where you chose your peace. Now, this could be for those of you guys that have been single for quite a while. The Hermit card is all about internalizing. It's all about going within. It's all about isolation for some of you guys, perhaps not really wanting to deal with, with people, not wanting to deal with partnerships or relationships. But that's quickly going to be changing. Why? Because we have the wheel of the year here. So your luck is about to turn when we're talking about relationships. We have the three of wands here. Expansion, growth. Could be fire energy coming towards you. I feel that you guys really have, um, you have a tendency of, you have a tendency of trying to fix is what they're telling me. So it could be that in relationships in the past, you see they're broken and you're attracted to them or you feel like you can help them heal, you can help them change, you can help them become better human beings. Unfortunately, that's not always a good thing. And it leaves you feeling broken. It leaves you feeling exhausted. It leaves you feeling like you have to go within yourself to try to heal yourself. It's almost like you stick around to try to help them and they just end up screwing you. And then you have to heal yourself. And this is an ending cycle or a non-ending cycle, I should say. With the Four of Swords, there is a need for you to heal. There is a need for you to stop trying to fix people. The Eight of Pentacles is individuals that come to you or people that you connect with where you feel like if they are a working project, you know what I'm getting? I'm hearing, um, I'm hearing mother energy, and this could be both male or female, it doesn't matter. But it's almost like instead of being a partner or them seeing you as a partner, they end up seeing you as like a mother figure or a father figure. Like you're, you know, what brings stability to them, you are you know, pushing them and trying. It's almost like you're babying them or you treat them like babies. Now, I know that sounds distorted, but what I mean by that is when they need assistance, you're there. When they need emotional support, you're there. When they need some type of help, and this could be monetary as well, you're there. And what they're telling you is, when are they there for you? This is a cycle that needs to end. This is something that you need to put to bed or you need to put to rest for 2021. We are no longer fixing people. Either you accept them as they are. And if it's something that doesn't work for you, then you walk away energy that's coming towards you is the ace of pentacles so you may be dealing with earth energy taurus capricorn virgo but this can also represent a new pathway for you a new beginning a new start and this is built on something solid keep in mind we have jupiter and capric sorry not capricorn jupiter and saturn conjuncting in aquarius so for some of you guys this could represent a lifetime partner coming in especially for you women out there that have jupiter return if you have jupiter in your natal chart in aquarius that is your jupiter return now in astrology for women this represents when jupiter does the return to that home or that house that's when you meet your lifetime partner the individual that is going to be with you to create a life so I feel that for a lot of you guys you guys have been tested you have really done a lot of work not just on yourself or for yourself but even if you've been in relationships in the past where you felt like where you felt like there was like they hurt you like you 
have gone through a lot of difficulties. Um, it's What they're saying here is it wasn't just your life lesson. It's their life lessons as well. So you've came to their life to teach them something. Something that even if you're no longer in their life till this day, they will remember you. Because you taught them a very important lesson for some of them to take care and water and nurture what they have. For others, having to deal with their own karma after they lost you. Now we have the Seven of Swords here. And the Seven of Swords is speaking directly about being completely honest with yourself. Being completely honest about what you want. Being transparent. And again, it's about not no longer looking at an individual with rose-colored glasses. What they're telling you is that you need to see them for what they really are. What they're showing you. And if it's something you're not going to deal with anymore, walk away from that. Do not entertain that energy that is inconsistent, that is no longer working for you. You've outgrown these lessons, okay? All right, so you have the Nine of Pentacles and the Full Card. Yeah, so I feel that for a lot of you guys, uh, singlehood is not going to be something that is going to last very long for you. I see you guys really getting into a point where you're comfortable or you're going to be comfortable being single. You're, you've been working on yourself with the full card. You've been putting effort and energy towards yourself, your desires, uh, aspirations, goals that you're trying to achieve. With the ace of, with the ace, uh, sorry, with the seven of swords and the ace of pentacles, it's like you got, you got to a point where you realized you know, I'm going to be completely honest with myself. I don't need anyone. You have a tendency of anything. You have a tendency of like taking care of people in your partnerships. So it's like, yes, you're self-sufficient. Yes, you're independent. Yes, you're empowered. But you have to be honest with yourself. Just because you're all of this doesn't mean that your heart doesn't desire a connection. And it's okay to want that. It's okay to want to be in a relationship. There's nothing wrong with that. Companionship is a very important lesson in our lives. But what they're saying here is you have to be honest with yourself. Stop telling yourself, I don't no longer need this or I don't want to deal with this. I get it. You've been through a lot over here. But what they're telling you here is it's okay to want a commitment. It's okay to want a long-term relationship. It's okay to want those things. When a person comes along, go based off of their actions. Go based off of what they show you, not what they say. And stop trying to fix them. All right, let's see what Spirit's message is here. What is Spirit's direct message for set number three? In regards to this situation, spirits. Now, you may be dealing with an earth energy in January. Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. For others of you, you may be dealing um, with a Aries. You may be dealing with a Virgo. You may be dealing with Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. I see all the energies here. Really? Let's see. Okay. Okay. All right, your first card here, it's time to take action. New moon in Aries. This could be an Aries energy that's coming towards you, where there may be a need for you to take action in the sense of when that opportunity arises or when this individual comes along. Do not overthink or overanalyze. Give yourself the opportunity to find happiness. It's okay to want that. Um... Do not be so rigid or do not be uh, overanalyzing the situations or over obsessing about the future because the more you do that, you're creating doubt. And when we create doubt, that is resistance. And when we create resistance, it takes longer to manifest or to unfold before us. 
your next card is prosperity lies ahead so there's definitely new beginnings coming towards you guys a lot of momentum here and a lot of uh l you know long-term commitment is what i'm hearing uh building off of uh something solid now your next card is confidence is your key to success new moon in leo yeah i feel that for some of you guys um because of these energies that you've experienced in the past I feel that there is, it could even be that you subconsciously settle with people that, you know, men or women that act like kids, they're immature and you have to baby them or take care of them or, you know, it's almost like you take on the mother or father role of telling them what to do because they just don't get it. Um, but there is something there that stems from either lack of confidence in yourself or the feeling that you, as an example, if you are interested in an individual that has their life together, that is just, they, they you know, they're mature, they know exactly what they want. This could intimidate you. And for some of you guys, this is what I'm hearing. For some of you guys, you have very strong personalities that you that you connect more with individuals that are not as strong mentally or in character because it's easier for you. It's more convenient for you. But in reality, it's not because you have to baby them, because you have to tell them what they need to do in a relationship. So again, it could have something to do with confidence. Perhaps, you know, dealing with an individual that is mature like yourself, that has a strong personality like yourself, may, be, may not be easy, but I guarantee you it's going to lead you to stability. It's going to lead you to something long-term. So again, it's about understanding your nature and why you do certain things or why you connect with certain individuals, perhaps thinking it's easier for you, and in reality, it becomes much more difficult because... You can't, it's kind of like that saying you can't, um, you can't teach a man to be a man or you can't, you can't raise a man, something like that. Maybe I'm saying it wrong. I don't know. Um, but the point to this is if he's a grown man or she's a grown woman and they're still acting like kids, like you're not their mom. You, you can't, you can't, you know, raise them. Like, that's not your job. As a partner, it is to find an individual that you have or that brings emotional stability to you that you can confide in that when times get rough, you know you're going to have that person and that person's going to have your back through and through. It's about feeling safe with them, not you being the one to make them feel safe. I hope that makes sense. So... There is new love coming towards you. I hope that these messages help you in some shape, way, or form. I wish you guys the very best. I wish you guys happy holidays, and we will see each other soon. All right? Take care. Bye-bye.